What's up, freaks? We are here for Steve Says. No, this is not Steve Says. This is the Russian and the Freak episode number one. This is the normal time. No, you're not. You're, you're already not even. You're already not even. This isn't going to work out too well. You're not even already. That main one right there, you're looking for. You're not looking at yourself over there. You're looking at that, that camera. There's like six cameras set up. So this is the Russian and the Freak show episode number one. Normally, this is the time that I do Steve Says, and this will still be the regular time for Steve Says every week, but we decided to do this. You still need to move over more. You're still way not even. Look, that right there. I guess I'm not even. So this this is going to be a the first episode of The Russian and the Freak. We have Not we have been trying to do this. She has been trying to do this for like three years. <laughs> three years. The truth is coming out. I think out. this is probably the first time on camera talking live that we've ever done probably i think so probably is because first of all i don't do well live i don't do well on camera i don't do well speaking i don't do well with humans so we'll see how this is going to go episode number one of the rush of the freak what this show is about this is about how to maintain your equilibrium and how to function in a, this dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and in life so you can transform all the chaotic complexity around you into your own special and personal normalcy. Turning complexity into normalcy. Turning fucking chaos and craziness into just everyday life. And not just surviving it, but thriving it within your family, within your business, and in your life. And that's what this is going to be all about. Yes, so let's introduce ourselves. Well, oh some of you... I'm not going to be able to do this if you're going to talk like that. If you're going to talk with that tube voice, I'm this not going to This is a tube. Oh, by the way, yeah. I will not be able to survive. Hold I can't on, even... Hold on, the tube, I the can't tube. even hear when you do your own live videos. Mm. I can't... I don't know if I could do this. The tube. I know. The tube. We got into the tube, but that's how it's going to work. So, guys, listen up. I'm a biker. Steve Eckert right Tyson, here. Tyson, Tyson, start a fire or something so I have to run out. <laughs> That's the show it's all about, guys. We wanted to, you, some of you know us really well from here, from social media, from Facebook. Some of us just, some of you just will be Save coming out for the Save first me, time. For the first Save time. Save me, Tyson! Today. And you're going to meet us right here. So, yes. How did I ever agree to this? No wonder guys. it took me five years to agree to do this. I'm not going to be able to deal with this. I don't think I'll be able to handle this. Tyson, start a fire downstairs or something. So we have to say, there's a fire, there's a fire. <laughs> I'm like, oh, sorry, everybody. We can't continue with the show today. We'll have to see you next week. I got to go put out a fire. And so, that's how life, chance. our life is. This so look, chance, Tyson. look, this is our life. This is what you're actually seeing right now. And our family is totally <laughs> abnormal. It's totally not normal. That's why we created this, this video, this live show, just to show you that if we can succeed in life, being so crazy, so crazy in this world, you can do this too. So we're going to be touching different topics on this show weekly. Weekly? Whoa. Just so you know, this is a one-time event. <laughs> weekly, I don't know. This is called episode one. It's episode one of one. <laughs> episode one out of one. This is what this episode is going to be. So really what we're doing this for is, all right, the world shut down, right? Everyone went fucking crazy everyone lost their minds people are, are are struggling there's pandemics and riots and elections and all this other shit and that's what everyone uses as their distraction and focuses on while their health goes to shit their business goes to shit their family goes to shit and this isn't just talking this is actual data that i've used come up with over the last six to seven months not just in our fitness business because we have a fitness business that we've closed down since then and go do just online. So we've seen where people have fallen into the pit of negativity just when it comes to their health and fitness. But since then, I've also been selling our, the project, which is a, a men's personal development program that we have out here. And let me tell you, some of the conversations that we have on these calls for men looking to get into the project, it shows me how fucked up they've become, especially during this time. And here's the thing. Everyone says, well, since the corona, since the COVID, this and this and this happened. But then you ask a few more questions and it turns out that this shit's been going on for five, six, ten years. So it's all fucking bullshit. The COVID and the corona and all that stuff are excuses that they're making. It's just they finally found a way to make an excuse for not being where they want to be in their life. Or why their, their, their health is fucked up. Why their business is failing. Why their fitness, why they're out of shape. It's nothing to do with any virus or any corona. 
It's to do with you and your decisions and the way that you freaking operate. That's really what it's all about. Yes, as Steve, as, as Steve said, when he does these calls and here in our fitness world, when I meet with clients and we do the Zoom calls and we do the uh, regular calls, it, it, I see this happening, not only with men, but with women, with entire families. And we figured, we thought that, yes, we are like the expert in the fitness industry, right? We can share you the uh, successes. We can show you the steps, the tools, how this can be done so we can help you in your life, succeed in your life but we we need to first establish really where you are and where you want to go and how we can show you the steps what we have done right because it really worked for us it it, it really worked for us besides the fact that we've been dealing with with this pandemic and this is the world was closed pretty much the world was shut down but people outside and you might find yourself in this that you closed yourself as well you felt like okay the alone factor we need to shut down our families we need to pretty much shut down our brains and stop operating yet what we've done and what we've done in this past few months it showed that long, you can be the long version or the it, short version well, what you're saying it can be done it can be Holy absolutely crap. done so look guys during this she few can months talk. Yes, and I bobble. He that's what he calls me bobbling, right? Do you say that a lot of times? What was the point we're getting? The point the point is, yes, the point is that the 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 pandemic the pandemic helped us to actually even create more structure and more discipline, despite the fact that that's what was going on. We would work out every single day with our family, right? We would we would since since March, since this happened, whatever, March sixteenth or whatever it is, throughout Going back and forth to New York, I think twice we've been there since since then. Actually drove there once, flew there. I think I've flown there twice since then or three, yes. or, three or four times. I don't even know. Between all of that, only, we've only missed either about five or six days of working out in that amount of time. And it's not to say, oh, we're so great. It's just because you can use a, a fucked up situation as an excuse to do more or you can use it as an excuse to do less. Excuse to make your business better, make your fitness better. To have more discipline or an excuse to have less. Oh, the corona. Oh, I'm stuck at home. That's why I gained this weight. No, it should be, oh, I'm stuck at home. That's why I'm in the best fucking shape of my life. That's the way you need to be thinking of it. Oh, I'm stuck at home. The business went to shit. So what? The business is going to go to shit. Deal with it. That's the way it is. That's the reality. Our, our fitness business took a big hit. Obviously, the fitness industry took a hit. So what do you have to do? You have to uh, adapt and overcome. And FIO, we say it all the time. Figure it out. What else you can do? Crumble up in a, in a bowl and sit in a dark corner and, and fucking cry in the corner? That shit ain't going to pay your bills. That's not going to uh, feed your fucking kids. That's not going to show your kids what it's like to be a resilient human, a resilient man or woman. You got to just figure it out. So we've branched off into so many different things. We've started two businesses during this. We're, we have the project coming up that I mentioned. It's a four-day event here in Southern California. So you have to first, you have to have that time off. You have to be able to travel. This is during this, this shutdown stuff, and we have it at our highest price ever. And it's absolutely sold out. It's actually a week from today. This Tuesday coming up. Today's Tuesday, a week from yesterday. So a week away, we have this coming up. It's the largest class ever at the highest price ever during elections and, and pandemics and travel restrictions. And why is that? Why is that? Two, two, two points I want to make with that. The first reason is people sat at home. The, the 1% of people that sat at home and they said, you know what? They, they finally, for the first time in their life, they're able to slow down and have some reflection and say, my life sucks. I fucking hate my life. Now, 99% of the people said that and they blamed a president. They blamed a corona. They blamed a, a riots and racism. They blame all this other stuff because they're unhappy with their fucking life. But the 1% of people that said, fuck, this is the first time in my life I can actually slow down and reflect and realize I'm fucking miserable. I'm unhappy with my life. So you know what? I'm going to do something about it. And that's why we're able to sell this out. This is $12,000. Plus you have to fly out on your own to come out here and have that time off from work or whatever it is during these crazy times. That shows you how fucked up some people have got that this is what it needs to get to. And we're going to help those people and we're going to transform their life. And they're going to have a rebirth. And they're going to come out with a whole different trajectory on their freaking life. But the, the second point is, 
See, now I'm fucking babbling and I Now my this is as Steve does, right? This is the Steve does. What That's was the what second gets. point? I don't even remember the second point. I don't know. I don't even know what I was talking about. Anymore. I got all fired up thinking about the project coming up. I don't even remember now, what the listen, hell I was talking listen, about. Now, listen, listen. I have to stop him right now. When he gets fired up like this at home, oh boy, everybody have to stand like this. And you should have the. You should know what it's like when, when certain people are in their certain way. Sometimes it's like, all right, you can stop them. Sometimes it's just, you, you let them do what they have to do. And shine and 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 do with it figure it out so when it comes to the project so that was the first reason that the people figured out what they need to do the second point is that i just remembered is it shows you that you think you can't go and provide your service or you can't start a business or you can't make money during this crazy time that's also bullshit because people saying they can't afford stuff at certain times it, it was excuses because how did we sell that many if people are struggling so bad? So you're in your business and you're thinking, oh my God, my business is going down. I can't do anything about it. Let's just fold up shop. Let's move and, and, and live, not live the way we want to live. No, you figure something else out. There are still people out there that have money that need your freaking services, that need your product and are willing to pay for it. It's just up to you to stop bitching and crying and go and find those people. Whether or not it's in your primary industry, if you have to shift gears for a little while, while you hold the line on, on your other business and figure something else out and do something else like we've done with moving forward with the project and going all out on it while the fitness business, we're trying to let it recover because it got hammered. Yes. We're, of course, we're still excelling in the fitness business and still there and still going strong, but it's nowhere near where it was. But so we had to do some other things because there's still people out there in different areas that do have the money. So don't make an excuse that you can't make money. You can't still live the same way you were living before. We're living exactly how we were living before. Because we don't let that be an excuse to slow you down. Let an excuse for you to even grow and, and think of new ways, to new, new areas to grow in. Yes, I want to touch um, a base on these two things. Steve started talking about the subject. I also see some guys have done the subject, uh, a, a subject, the project. I'm sorry, the, the project. Subject? The project. I see Byron over there. I see some other Tyson, guys. we're doing the subject <laughs> next week. No longer doing the project. And look, this is how it goes. I make a comment. And the whole household is laughing. But yes, so the project and uh, whoever's done it, make sure that you you're making a comment and inviting some other people for this because it's coming up in Let's just a few the days. Subject. Subject. The subject. But guys, listen up. So when Steve said during the pandemic, we didn't even think like it's pandemic because we were getting up early in the morning and doing what we supposed to be doing in like a regular schedule. I remember these times our offices used to be together in the same room. Now we separate them because we both babble and I loud on the phone and we could not hear each other. So we, I remember the time getting up in the morning, he would be in his desk, I would be in my own desk and doing, doing the work in the morning the same time and we would have done the same exactly schedules that we had because the, the gym kept the gym kept going right we had a full gym we had full capacity uh, develop uh, deliver all these sessions for months and months but yet at the same time we pivot we pivot our business within 24 hours and you can probably do it too uh, if you haven't done it, there's there are still ways that you can actually change things based on what you know. Because the knowledge is that if you have the knowledge, nobody is able to take it away from you. And sometimes, yes, you might think like, oh, I'm stuck. I don't know where to go. But you, you need that time, that moment in your day. You need to create that time that your brain will put in a piece of paper what is inside you, that, that head of yours. So what ideas you can have, how you can change the business. That's what we did. We pivot, we transfer to online. And as Steve said, it's not as it used to be. Of course it's not, but we're building up for it. So we, we kind of switch and create a little bit different idea of how we're going to go about that business. And let me tell you one thing, like a lot of people or people, even members maybe that used to be in, this, in our gym that we were so thankful for might have felt like, oh, we failed. No, we never felt that the fact that we closed the business, we didn't feel, fell, fell. We actually didn't quit. We didn't quit. We continue going. So the fact that you sometimes shut down the business doesn't mean that you fail. It's just be, this is the right decision for you to make, to go forward, to actually propel yourself to do something better, bigger and better, right? 
So, sorry, I always make those mistakes. Tyson, when fire, I fire, Tyson, <laughs> fire, quickly, save me. There's a fire going on around us. So, yes, that's, that's how we have been operating. So, again, this idea of the show is to show you that if we have done it in being, being just like, a, we are like a regular family. Who I, is regular? What is regular about? Regular There's nothing family. regular. Pretend. We are just like a regular family. Abnormal. And But we just wanted to show you that in all your own families, in your own circles, you're going to realize that there is no uh, there is no such a thing as normal. You just need to kind of accept the way how you are, accept your partner, accept your kids, accept people around you, and just build that strong empire of your household so you can actually push forward but yet you need to be on the same page with everybody right and that's what we did and that's what we're trying to do it right now so so what so that's all you got you're done right now yeah <laughs> so that was a short version so the the point is that all right, you might have to work at home now. Maybe you also have to work out at home during this time. And some places are not going back to normal ever. Some industries have said they're staying at home, they're staying remote. And some cities now, I think Chicago just today, said they're going back to a full lockdown. The entire city or the entire state of Illinois is going to a full lockdown. So this stuff's going to keep happening over and over again. So let me tell you this. I'm going to get fucking real and raw with you for a second. And if this hurts your ears and stings a little bit, then it should. And you should be one of those people that sits on the couch during the time you have to be alone and reflect and realize where you're going wrong. If you're stuck in your house that you saved up money for years for, put probably every penny you own into a down payment. You probably spend 30% of your salary on your mortgage or your rent every month. And you're sitting in that home and you, you do renovations and decorations and, and everything the way you like it and the way you want it. And you can't stand to be in your own home and you're freaking out after a couple of months of being there. You're first of all, you need to fucking appreciate shit a little more. Appreciate what the fuck you have. The second, second thing is stop bitching and whining about being stuck in the house and, and having to work from home. Imagine if you didn't have a home. Imagine if you didn't have a, a, a job to be having to do from your computer and you're burnt out from Zoom meetings. Fuck that. Stop complaining. Seriously, stop complaining. And then the kids are at home schooling. Oh my God, these kids are going to drive me crazy. And then... Now they're going to school hybrid, half day in person, half day. Oh my God, it's so stressful having to bring them and pick them up. Or maybe they're going to school and oh my God, I want them to go to school now. Like it's your, just stop fucking complaining about everything that happens in your life. You can't control half of that shit. So just make the best of it. Like if you're sitting, those are your kids you fucking had. Your kids that you had. Stop complaining about it. You're stuck at home with your kids. You should be like, fuck yeah. I'm stuck at home with my kids all day for three, four months. We have a fucking blast here. We have a blast. Right, Tyson? We'll work hard. We'll, we'll, we'll structure the day so it's, it's broken down where we know when it's time to work, when it's time to, to fuck around and, and play and whatever else. But you should be glad. You're, like, think of, that's how you have to reframe everything that happens in your freaking life, in your business, in your family. And then now you have to be, be, be stuck working together in the same place. Then you, you're, That's the person you chose to fucking get married to. Maybe you made a wrong decision. Maybe you need to fucking reevaluate that. If you can't stand to be in the same house with people for, oh my God, that's going to drive me crazy. I can't be around that person. Or you, you can't work around each other. Because th th you're, those are your decisions you made. So stop complaining about it. And, and, and then secondly, again, back to appreciate what the fuck you have. Appreciate all that stuff you have. People who, who would kill. People who would kill and would die to have a fraction of what you have. But you'll sit and bitch and moan about every little thing that happens. Oh my God, now I have to bring them to school just for a couple hours. Then I have to go pick them up. And then I have to have these Zoom meetings. And I'm all Zoomed out. And the kids are driving me crazy. Man, shut up. Stop complaining. Seriously. It ain't that bad. Appreciate that, what you have. It could be a lot freaking worse. Trust me. Yes, yes. So well said. So, guys, today, today was that short episode that you, we just want to kind of touch up and give you an idea what the show is all about but we would love to actually hear from you a little feedback or maybe you have some questions or maybe you find some awesome points please make comments here on this video and we will be seeing you next week and and put in there and talk about really what it's about is what is your questions what are your struggles on balance balancing i hate that balance the work-life balance especially when you're working from home your kids are home or what's the problem with 
the balance with what are you having? What are you struggling with when it comes to your business right now during the craziness because you have to work from home, your kids and the school, or you're to get you have to be around your spouse and working from home. What are the parts that you're struggling with? What is bringing you down when it comes to then having to work out at home or your health and fitness, or you have to go to the gym and wear a fucking face diaper while you're working out? So talk about that. Like even now, like put in the comments or just send a private message. What are the things you're struggling with when it comes to and, and go back to the title of what I said, what I said this show is about. It's how to maintain your equilibrium. Equilibrium. Because I hate the word balance. I need a work-life balance. You don't need a work-life fucking balance. You just need to just control your shit. You need to structure your day and create habits that no matter what happens, like we had fires out here the other day. Guess what? I woke up and did the same thing I've done for the last 15, 20 years. We hit, there's riots around. I woke up, did the same shit. There's an election today. Woke up, did the same shit. There's pandemics and shutdowns and lockdowns and all the other bullshit going on. Wake up and do the same structured routine. The, you need to get back to the basics. Get back to the fundamentals, the foundations in your family, in your fitness, in your house, in your business. Get back to the fundamentals because you probably got fucking complacent. And we have a, a saying in the military that complacency kills. And I guarantee you got complacent in your business, in your working out, with your family. You got fucking complacent. And now that you're stuck at home, that complacency is shining for everyone to see. And you're realizing where the holes were. So you have the choice. Either plug those holes or you better fucking get off that boat and go get on a new boat. Because you're not, you you're, you're just keep digging yourself deeper and deeper in a hole. So again, this is, it's a, we said how to, how to maintain your equilibrium and how to function in a dysfunctional world. If you let this world lead your day. This fucked up, this and the, and the shit, this disgustingness that goes on on social media. You let that lead your day, and you take that into your home with your family and your kids. If you let them do that, then you don't. You're freaking screwed. If you don't know how to make light of the situation and have fun with it and make jokes about shit and have have thick skin and not take everything personal when it comes to your family, when it comes to your business, and not crumble under the pressure, you're freaking doomed. You need to be able to function in this fucked up world, or you're gonna be just as fucked up as the rest of them. That's why you need to think about it. Like, think about we wearing masks to work out. Not us, because we do the online sessions. But you chose to. You chose that path to go to the gym, for instance, and wear a mask, right? So, please, put in the comments below. Maybe there are subjects that you're looking for. Maybe, like Steve said, a big struggle or things that you've really had a hard and difficult time. And look, there is always a way out of every situation. That's how we, that's how our family looked into things because... You know, if, I wasn't done, right? I was still going on the definition of the, the, the whole, the whole... Oh, go ahead. Oh, go right ahead. You just right, go right ahead. Let's continue. Go right ahead. Yeah, it's just being nice to each other, right? That's what it's all about. Are you sure? If you... It, so, back before I was rudely interrupted... <laughs> I was breaking down that when I gave you the brief, the overview of what, the, what this show is about, the last part said, transform chaotic complexity into your own special normalcy. Think about that. Chaotic complexity. The world, like if you saw this house on some days, you'd think it's a fucking madhouse. Like the police should be here. There should be, I don't know, FBI investigator. You wouldn't know it. They'd just be crazy. This is just a freak house. But guess what? It's what, it, it's being able to show that you can be crazy, be a freak. Be fun, be real, be yourself, but still be successful and still be focused and still make money and still grow businesses, still start new businesses, still re revive old businesses, still make shit happen throughout the craziness because you know you have your structure and your discipline. So when it's time to let loose, you can fucking let loose and you could have some fun and be crazy a little bit and make that craziness, get used to that craziness, get used to that change because guess what? Everything's fucking changing. Everything is it's gonna be this craziness. The second this is done right now, you think there's not gonna be another crazy thing coming up? In another week or two, get used to that shit. And if you can't, you're going to get freaking steamrolled. And you're going to be run over by the people who can handle that. That's what it's going to be. You need, so again, I'll, I'll read the whole thing again that backs you, is how to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional world as a freak family in business and life so you can transform chaotic complexity into your own special normalcy. So where are you struggling when it comes to that picture right there we're talking about? That's what we want to know. Put down in the comments below and send a private message. What are some topics you're struggling with as a family working together, dealing with the kids, and especially if you're running your own business or 
in some kind of business together, or maybe one person is running a business while the other one has a job, doesn't have a job. How does that work? These are the kind of things we could talk about on this show. And, well, this is the only show ever. This, again, I said this is one this on is one. This is the so. first and the last. First time. and the last. I don't know if I could deal with this ever, on, a, on a weekly basis. I don't know. I, I had to be highly medicated to be able to sit here for 15 minutes and do this. It was like B.A. Baracus before he would go on the helicopter on the plane. They'd have to give him milk because he loved his milk, but they really put the drugs inside of it to knock him out so they could take him on the plane ride to go to the mission. So they gave me a bottle of milk today, and this is what happened. And Next thing I know, I'm sitting on a stool talking to you next to a Russian, and, you have, and we're freaking babbling about stuff. you have completely crazy sucks. Tyson! And listen, guys, this is a normal stuff. The, the stuff just keeps on coming out constantly in this house. And if... And, and you, pretty much me as a Russian, really not a Russian, but Polish, Russian. learn how to live with this stuff. And it's you perfect. Polish? Yeah. What's Polish? Me. Oh, God. Poland he is just, in Russia? He just l- Poland learned in Russia? that I am Polish. Is Poland in Russia? I'm not kidding. Poland is in Russia? I thought there were two separate states. There are two separate okay. countries. So. Hold on, guys. Do you know... What language you speak in Russia? And what language you speak in Poland? Please post below. Uh, no. I see. What, what, what so wait a minute. So you're Pol- You're from Poland? Yes. Then why the fuck is this called the Russian? And the f- You're really not from Russia. Holy shit. You learn something new every day. You see? That's Holy how the crap. family goes. What do you have there? Nothing. Yeah, show it. Anyway, we will see you next time if this ever happens again. If they could convince me to drink the milk, they're going to have to find more clever ways because I'm not falling for that milk trick again. That was bullshit. (laughs) Next thing, my ass is stuck to this stool and I can't even go anywhere. If I get up, I get electrocuted. So we will see you next time on the Freak, the Russian and the Freak show. I'm sure Little Freak Show here has something he wants to tell you to finish off. normal child I can't imagine where we get you from you are fucking awesome we will talk to you later no excuses no excuses no excuses again that was lame and again and again and again and again and again and again and again